Welcome, my future students. My name is Edwin Diaz, and I got over 490,000 students in Udemy and over 700,000 students all over the world. Welcome to my MPM for Beginners course here. Now, you might, you might be wondering, I know that you want to take this course for MPM, but what is MPM exactly? Let's find out. Well, MPM, we know is a Node Package Manager. It's a package manager for JavaScript. Basically, that's what it is. So you're able to download packages for JavaScript, like frameworks or even libraries. Okay. It comes pre-packaged with Node.js. So when you download Node.js, you have NPM available to you and you can use some of, some of the NPM commands to download the packages, to update your packages, to do a whole bunch of little things that are very useful with JavaScript stuff. Now it has an online database called NPM registry at npmjs.com. That's an online database that has all the really cool packages that you can download for free. And some of them you have to pay for it. Now, you might be thinking, what is the course objective? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to quickly and easily go up and running with NPM, okay? I'm gonna show you all the fundamentals really quick. I will get you up and running really fast, guys. And let me tell you why. Technology moves fast. And we can't spend years learning a tools so my advice is this, pick a programming language you like, practice with projects, find the best tools for that specific language so, so that it makes your job easier. You don't want to spend a lot of time doing something that's something that you do all the time, all right? So like processing image, you don't want to write the code from scratch. You find packages for that, right? You learn the fundamentals of the tools and you practice don't spend a lot of time learning a tool. Okay. Spend a lot of time learning the language really good and then use tools to make your life easier. Guys, with this course, you're not just getting a course, you're getting top support from me with your questions and your code. You will not fall asleep in my class. I promise you that I'm not a boring guy. You can tell that, right? So you will finish this course. Even if you get angry at me for pushing you, I will make you finish this course. Even if it's a short course, you will finish it. Even if I have to call you home. All right. So what are you waiting for? Are you ready for this journey? I hope you are because I'm ready to teach you. Let's get started. Hi, welcome my dear students. Now that you are my students, I want to give you some tips here that have allowed me to change my life. My life wasn't always this easy, but with, hopefully with these tips, some of you can also have the same change or even better change that I had or have recently, or even from a couple of years ago. Okay. So now I know that some of you are already doing pretty good with yourselves and you're taking these courses as hobbies, or maybe you have a pretty good career, but you know, it's not all about knowledge. It's not all about specialized knowledge. You also need to live life, right? Uh, in a certain way to be successful in all, in all aspects. Okay. Now let me give you some course tips though. Since you are taking a course, I want to give you some tips for the course. Don't just watch the course guys do it. Okay. Take some time for your busy schedule and start writing the code. Even if you think you know the stuff. Okay. Ask questions only when you try figuring it out first. I know you probably have a lot of questions, but it's good to actually go and try your code and try to find the answer to that before you ask the question. So that way you get a lot of practice trying to find out, right? Treat everyone with respect in this course and all courses. There's no need to disrespect anybody. If you're having a bad day, don't say anything. Wait for the next day. Maybe you'll have a, you know, best next day, right? Life tips. Whatever you do in life that you want to perfect, that you want to master, do it consistently. If you don't want to master it, if you just want to build a habit, do it consistently. For example, if you want to learn how to do this course, do it consistently. If you want to learn a programming language, do it consistently. If you want to be a good person, do it consistently. Whatever you do in life, right? Do harder things first. You're just going to make the easier things a lot easier later on. Right? Does it make sense? If you do something hard, like say if you, for some reason, are having trouble doing math, do the hardest part, part first. Then everything else will, will be easier for you. If you're working out, start with the heaviest weight first. So that way when you're tired, you can do the less weights, right? The, the weights that are weight less. Finish always, always while you start. Don't let it 
sit there and do nothing because it's going to work in your subconscious. Okay. Your subconscious is going to get used to not finishing what it starts. And then your whole life is going to be like that. Okay. You always going to leave things for, for, for next day, for next day, for next day. And you never finish it. Your whole life is going to be a mess. Believe me, try to always finish what you start. Even if you if basic things like doing your bed, finish it. If you started it, don't get distracted. Just try to finish it. If you're cleaning your house, finish cleaning your house, your car, finish it. It's going to get your brain used to finishing what it starts. And once you get, build that habit, forget about it. You can do whatever you want in life. Okay. Anyway, ho hopefully, and I know if you follow these tips, you're going to do a lot better than what you're doing right now. If you're not doing it already, thank you so much. And I'll see you later on in the course. Welcome back, my amazing students. So in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to get NPM node package manager. And now the name node package manager means that is related to node and node.js is a JavaScript runtime environment. All right. Basically, Node.js allows us to use JavaScript to communicate with servers, just like PHP does and other technologies out there. Okay. So the first thing that you have to do is download it. All right. This is the current version. This is the most stable version. So you're welcome to download any of those and you are going to be good to go. If you click any of them, you're going to get the package here. Now, if you're using a Mac, of course, this is going to tell you hey, download for Mac. If you're using Windows, it's going to tell you hey, download for Windows. All right. So don't worry too much about that. You open the package. Sometimes you might, you might need to unzip it. So make sure you have some type of program for that. And it's going to, this is the installer. So it's going to, of course, guide me through this. I agree all that just installed and put your passport, uh, passport, password. If you have to, uh, if you don't, don't worry about it. And then just install it. Like you install any program. Okay. And once you install it, the next thing that you have to do is open your command prompt or terminal. Okay. For the Mac, of course, is the terminal and you can go to the launch pad and type in tur, open it up. Okay. I have it open in another monitor that I got right here for windows users. Of course, is your command prompt. So, uh, go to your program, search and run CMD. Okay. So you go to your program somewhere in the left side, I believe in, uh, windows, go there, click on run CMD or search CMD and just click it. It's going to be your command prompt or anywhere in your, in your windows desktop. And if you get lost for some reason, you can't find it. Just Google it guys, how to find your command prompt in windows, windows 10, windows 11, whatever version you have. All right. And once you are in your command prompt or terminal, all you have to do is write the keyword node or the word node dash V. Okay. Or I think there's another version dash version. I think that's two dashes and there we go. Okay. And that's going to tell you what type of version, what, what version do you have, you have of node and now you're done. Okay. Now, like I mentioned, node is a environment for uh, JavaScript. So we can execute JavaScript files in our computer. Just to, just to show you just a little demonstration. If I type in node, that's going to take me to the node shell right here. So here I can do JavaScript stuff. If I wanted to, I don't know, add a number, you see one plus one. If I wanted to save it. Okay. Like if I just create a variable called number or something. And I wanted to save this calculation, enter. And if I put the variable name here, it's going to give me that result. Okay. So this is a little cool stuff here that you can play around with and just to get out control C control C again, you get out. Okay. So when you install node, you already have NPM installed automatically. Okay. There is the no package manager. It comes with no. So all you have to do is type in NPM dash V and there you go. You have it there. Okay. That's the last thing I got to show you here. So now with no NPM, you can install any package for Node.js. Anyway, thank you so much and I'll see you on the next lecture.
Welcome back, my students, my awesome students. So in this lecture, I'm going to show you a really useful command uh, when it comes to uh, NPM, something that every beginner should know, okay? And guys, most programs out there, terminal programs, have some type of help manual that you can, you know, look for, okay? So always look for, for some type of help. So that way, so for some doc documentation inside your program, for example, NPM, right? For example, for NPM, we do this, NPM help. And now here, you can find a whole bunch of things that will tell you how it works, okay? So here are some commands that we can type in with NPM, okay? As you can see, NPM access, add user, audit, bugs, NPM, uh, install test, help search, all these commands here, okay? So we first run npm, then the command, and this is the command. Where? It's telling you is one of, okay? Where command is one of these. That's what it's telling you right here. npm command where command, which is this guy, is one of these, okay? I'll show you uh, just a couple real quick. So this one here will display the full usage. So if we do npm L, right, we get some more information. All right. So let's try one that I saw here. So just to show you help search. This is a pretty cool one. And by the way, guys, you can also do this npm. Um, you type in the command that you want to know about. Let's say, for example, we want to know about the view, right? And we say view and then dash H. And that's going to give you some more information about what how this is applied, all right? I know it seems confusing, but once you get used to it, you'll find a way, okay? Um, let's go ahead and run the other one. So help, npm help, that's the first thing, and then search, okay? Because that's the name of it. And then whatever we want to search, this command here is going to go to the documentation. It's going to log in online. Well, not log in, but it's going to go and launch some type of browser online and help you find something in their website. So let's just check for maybe outdated stuff in their documentation. And hey, it tells me, hey, listen, we, we found some stuff. This is what it's telling me right here. So there are some things that um, we found and you can type in this command to find it in the documentation. There are some things written about on our website, okay? And this is the command to find it. So I'm just gonna paste that in here, enter. Well, and this is what it's telling me right here. This is straight from the website, okay? Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Okay, there we go, it's actually Control C, I got out. Okay, what about npm help update? There we go. Update a package. Okay, now I guess this new uh, npm, it's not before, I think it's not doing that anymore. It used to launch me online and find information, but I guess it's doing it right here. So I just recently updated that. So that's another thing, guys. Sometimes you're typing in commands that's supposed to do one thing, and then you find out they do something else or something extra. Remember that NPM or Node keeps updating NPM all the time. As Node updates, NPM updates as well. And they add stuff, they take off stuff, and you got to keep up to date with these things, okay? But just know that this command, let's go Control-C. This command here, help, can help you find that information. Whatever they decide in the future, doesn't really matter. Just know that help is gonna help you find whatever you need, okay? Whatever information you need about that specific command, okay? Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next lecture. All righty, are you guys ready? Let's do this. Now, guys, this might seem like it's small information. Uh, probably this is a very small course for you, but just know that what you're learning here, if you don't know it, it's something, it's a, 
it's really good because it's a really cool tool to to um to use with your development okay you're gonna use npm no matter what technology you're using if you're using php or javascript whatever technology you're gonna encounter npm especially with javascript stuff and everything out there is javascript php html css you're going to be using npm okay so it's a really really cool packet uh package or tool uh package tool to use all right so I'm going to show you some more things right now. Let's go and create a project, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop real quick. And I'm, I'm going a little bit ahead of myself, but I want to show you that this tool is not only capable of, you know, managing, uh, you know, creating stuff like like what we have been doing here, okay? Just, just doing little simple things like this, like, oh, let's look at the help section and all that. This tool can actually do a lot more things, all right? It can create entire projects, okay? This tool not only manages applica uh, packages for Node, but it creates packages, creates templates, it does configurations, it, it does a whole bunch of things, all right? So, let's go to, I'm gonna go to desktop real quick. Just You can be on your desktop in whatever computer you are using when you open your terminal or your command prompt if you're using windows of course i think you can do cd when you open the command prompt and you can do just desktop with uppercase desktop like that okay and that will take you to your desktop once you open your command prompt and i believe that you can do this uh c drive on windows something like that or the um backslash like this and that should take you to your desktop or i think it's something like this users and desktop okay on windows anyway so i'm going to show you this real quick you don't have to do it with me i just want you to pay very close attention so um i'm going to create let me let me make a directory here real quick i'm going to make a directory i'm going to call it npm code just like that that's how you make a directory just in case you don't know in uh, the terminal npm I'm just going to go to that. Okay. Don't worry too much about what I'm doing right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use NPM because NPM right now is installed globally in my computer. Okay. So um, let's get it to work. I'm going to do NPM init. Okay. And I'm going to tell with this command, I'm going to tell my application here my uh, my program npm to create to initialize a project i'm going to press enter and it's going to start asking me questions hey what package name do you want well i'm just if i press enter it's just going to choose this guy right here so i'm just going to keep, keep pressing enter but uh, you can just start typing in stuff if you want enter description uh this is for this is for edwin diaz whatever enter Point of entry of my application, index, or whatever I want to call it. I'm going to call it app.js. Test command, enter. Git repository, enter. Keywords, Edwin or whatever. Author, Edwin. License, enter. Whatever, enter. And now if I do ls to look at it, it created a package JSON file. Okay? Now, let me show you. You don't need to do this because I know some of you are using Windows. So if you don't know how to use the terminal. Oh, guys, if you don't know how to use the terminal, I got a great course for you. Uh, it's called Units. Um, that's one for uh, for people that are using the Mac. Units for uh, Mac users. And I also have another course called Bash. Okay? Just in case you want to learn how to do terminal stuff. Okay? But I just know that uh, that information is out there. So I'm going to just show you what's inside that package. That's all I'm doing right now. Okay, I'm inside that package using nano. And this package here, by the way, package.json, uh, usually is in the root of the project. Okay, and this holds very various metadata, data, metadata re relevant to the project. Okay, so... This file is used to give information to NPM that allows it to identify the project as well as handle its dependencies. 
okay so when you have when you install something I'm gonna show you later on but when you install something this file will keep track and npm every time you run this program npm is going to be looking for that uh, for whatever information you got on this file here and it's gonna find whatever package you got based on here and if it's outdated it's gonna update it it's gonna do a whole bunch of things so this is going to give npm information about your specific project at the moment okay because you can create many different projects that have many different package.json file okay so package.json is not just one file it's one file per project so I'm gonna control X to get out okay and I'm gonna show you so I was able to do this I'm gonna delete what I have I'm gonna remove everything from here okay I'm gonna remove uh, all the extensions it says it won't remove that for some reason don't worry too much about what I'm doing okay I just want you to pay very t uh, close attention all right let me see if it remove everything yeah that's fine all right so let me clear this out so you were you saw how we were able to create a project using npm in it right that's really awesome stuff now with you can also avoid all the questions of that and do npm y enter and that's it it created the project for you immediately all right it created that package.json and now you can start installing stuff like npm install whatever use the command to install whatever package you want we're gonna learn a little bit about that later okay so now if I wanted to actually uh, let me remove that package.json if I wanted to install a React package, I'll do npm init or initialize a React package and I will do this. Where do I want it? I want it my app right here. And that's going to create a React application, at least the template. So you can start playing around with it. Okay. Simp super simple. Control C to get out and not install anything I'm just gonna remove my app okay let me do this and that removes everything okay that removes that folder but anyway so that's npm in it for you guys there are other commands that you can try with npm in it other uh, options okay but that's more of an in-depth course. You really don't need to know that much when you first start. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you on the next lecture, guys. Hopefully, this gives you some information about NPM in it and showed you a couple different things. Thank you. Alrighty, welcome back, my awesome students. So what I'm going to do here, I, I still have that folder right here on my desktop. Okay. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to install a package, but I want to start it with npm init first because I can't really install a package unless I have something initialized, at least the package.json file. All right. I could create that package.json manually if I wanted to, but I'm going to let npm do it because it makes no sense me creating all that data manually, right? If I can just do it like this. So npm init, not unit, but init, and then we press the Y because I don't want it to be I don't want to be asked questions right now guys you can open this up in a IDE if you have integrated development environment or any text editor and run it from there run the uh, if you have a terminal built in into a, your text editor or whatever just you can run it from there if you want so that way you can see all this here like for example um, I have I believe I have web store here somewhere WebStorm. There we go. I'm just gonna open it up and show you real quick, guys. I'm always trying to show you extra information, even though it some sometimes it might not be 100% related to what I'm actually teaching you at the moment. This is related though, but I like to show you new things because the more you know, the more I show you, the better you're gonna become, and maybe later on you're gonna use some of this information for your benefit. Okay. This stuff that took me some time to learn, and I wanted you guys to learn it um, easily. Okay, so the more information, the better for you guys. This is the way I see it. 
And um, and that's it. Let me just open it up. I don't know why my ID keeps going down and up. <laughs> anyway, this is a WebStorm. This is a really cool tool to have uh, for your projects, for your JavaScript projects, uh, your HTML. And as you can see, we have the terminal down here. And it opens up in the same uh, root right here. So I can type in the, the stuff right here. So I, the reason why I'm going to use this instead of the command prompt or the terminal, I can use this because I'm still, it's doing the same thing. Okay. This is just built in into it. And this is outside. I'm going to use this for demonstration purposes only because I want you guys to see what's going on, what's happening here when I install a package. Okay. So we can install a package. Remember that we can do um, this and then help hyphen H and it's going to give us some instructions on how to install a package, which is really easy by the way. So npm I, I can do I and then express just an abbreviation, but I'm going to do install and then express. This is just a package here that we use when we are playing around with Node.js. And as you can see here, I'm going to show you. I just pressed it here and all of a sudden it's showing me another field here on this JSON document that is telling me, hey, this is a dependency. And look, it's called express. Okay. So this is a package that it downloaded. And once it downloaded this package, it created another folder called node modules. Remember, we're doing node here. That's what we got installed. Okay. And this folder here, if I click it, is going to have a whole bunch of information because in order for Express to work, NPM also downloads other packages that it depends on. So, NPM, okay, install this command, not only installs the package that you're looking for, in this case Express, but it also installs any packages that it depends on, okay? So, of course, you're going to see a whole bunch of things and you're going to see Express right here. This is the package. I don't know if you can see it because it's kind of small, right? Now, if I install another package, npm install course, for example, you can see now that I installed course. And now, if I look at this, we can see course. Okay, and we can see the library here and the package.json of that file. Express the library here of any other packages, right? And right here. Each of these should have a different structure, but most packages are going to have a library folder, right? So this has the router. I can download all kinds of JavaScript files. And by the way, when you download something, if you it downloads it from the library called npmjs, npmjs.com. And here you can start looking for that package, whatever package that is. In this case is Express. I'm going to press enter and you can see that it found Express. We just click and we find information about that specific package. Okay. How to use it. The installation. This is the command right here. Okay. Some quick start if you want to generate, you know, you can download another package here called Express Generator to to have more of a quick start for Express. So you read on it and uh, you, you get more familiar with it if you want. So this is how we install packages with NPM in Node. See you in the next lecture, guys. Welcome, my awesome students. I hope you guys are paying attention. I know this is a short course, but you're here for a reason. So make sure that you're learning this stuff right because you're going to need it later on. All right. So close your doors, your windows, tell your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, whatever, your grandma, your kids to leave you alone and give you some minutes. OK. All right. So let's do this. So, in, you know, we already installed dependencies for, we learned how to install dependencies, right? We're using NPM. But what about stuff that are only needed in development? 
because right now these dependencies are needed for a project let's just imagine we're creating a project all right so we have dependencies and we also have development dependencies okay for example let's say we want a i don't know like a library that helps us write better javascript it's going to help us iterate through arrays better object strings it's going to help us manipulate stuff or you know test test values or create composite functions if you didn't understand what i just said do not worry but let's just say that we are using a package for development in not for production production is when it's out there already on the online working all right let's just use it in our computer so what how we install a package for that only we don't want it to be it's included so here's the command let's say I'm gonna be using a famous library that's gonna help us do what I just said to you which I'm not gonna repeat but anyway <laughs> Lodash okay and then we just pass a flag here and we just say we put safe now this is not gonna be a regular safe okay this is gonna be a special safe a safe that is going to allow us to save this dependency or this development dependency here we're not really telling your npm right now save this dependency save this as a, as a dependency we need to include something else right here where I have the cursor you put the little dash and you put dev and then enter and voila now if I click here you can see now that when I click guys when I click my IDE it just refreshes so you see now that we have a new field in this JSON document dev dependencies lodash all right perfect guys and this this is with every application out there so remember the, the the command for any package I mean you're gonna put hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev or dash if you want to call it that look at that dash it's right here isn't that funny and then lol dash I'm just joking all right come on you got to put some humor into this guys and at the same time some attention don't make me give you an F alrighty I'll see you in the next one guys take care welcome back my dear students so in some cases you you already know the version that you want to install um, in your application the dependency you want to install. you know the version number like in, let me just give you an example like we do a lot of uh, PHP stuff here and there is a version of Laravel that only works with certain versions of PHP and sometimes certain packages don't work with those versions and we need to install certain versions of Laravel so and this is just Laravel but but the concept is this there are a few things that you can do here to install just specific versions of whatever you want okay I'm gonna show you how to do that for example let's say we want to install a version of Express a different version let's let's just play around around with the uh, I uh, was using I think it was the Lodash all right but but let's just play around a little bit with this I'm gonna say npm install and if I wanted a specific version of let's say Express I would just do Express at symbol and whatever version I want 3.3 .3. okay I can be very specific and it would download that version for me but if I want to download the latest version of 3 for example I can just take all of them out and just put that let's say I want to download bootstrap bootstrap at version 4 I'm gonna press enter and that's going to download the latest version of bootstrap okay and as you can see here it downloaded 4.3 now let me uninstall that okay let me actually go down and only install bootstrap there we go sometimes that doesn't work if you just do it with the with the version you just do on install bootstrap now let's then uninstall the latest version okay let's install that actually enter and now you can see the latest version was 4.3 but what about version 3 let's uninstall it let's do install version 3 I use that one a lot enter 
and now you can see 130 packages the version 3 was 3.34.1 uh, let's uninstall it let's install version uh, 3. Point, I don't know let's only on un, uh, let's see if it has version 3.1 it doesn't have version 3.1. Sometimes some of these packages don't work. Actually, that was uninstalled. Hold on. Let's do this one. Let's see if it, if it, there is a version 3.1.1. And there we go. See that? So you can be a specific or not be a specific. Okay? So just to give you a heads up on that. Now, if you want to only install the latest version, you don't have to put anything. You don't have to put, oh, I just want the, the latest version of 4 and just do 4 uh, at symbol 4. No, you just do it without it and NPM will take care of the rest if you want to install the latest version. And I keep saying uninstall, right? I think I said that like a couple seconds ago. But anyway, thank you so much. I hope you got the uh, the message here. I hope you got the, the lesson. And I'll see you on the next lecture. All right, all right. I already can hear some of you saying, Edwin, all right, you did not show me. You showed me how to install things, but what about taking them, taking them off? How can I do that? Well, you got, you got a couple options here. First of all, you can just take the field off. I don't recommend that. You can make a mistake on your package that JSON and, you know. But so usually you take that off and you just run npm install, okay? And that's going to run all this file again. All right. So as you can see here, we it was very easy to make a mistake. Let's just close that. And I'm just going to comment that out. And I'm just going to take this off. Okay. Let's just do it right there. Anyway. And then just npm install. And that's just going to install whatever we got here. Now, I don't want to do it like that. I want to show you the right way. Because when you do it like this, what happens is that you leave stuff in the no modules folder. Okay, simple. So I'm going to Command Z or Control Z, whatever you're using, and I'm going to undo all this stuff. And here, I'm going to say, hey, listen, instead of installing, I'm going to uninstall. And let's say I want to uninstall that Lodash, even though I like that uh, utility to stuff. It's, it's cool. And then we got to tell npm what is it is it in the dependencies or is it in the, the dev side so we just type in the same command we did before and enter and now look at that the dependencies document is empty here okay simple as that guys this short was nice and sweet right see you in the next one take care Welcome my awesome students. So in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to uh, install the packages globally and uninstall them, of course, um, and where they are located, right? So here's the deal. Right now, every time you we run npm install, we are installing packages in our project, depending where we are, okay? So for example, in this case, let me open another tab here, right? This is the the folder that I'm located right npm code that's a folder that's my project right here so every time I run npm install it's gonna run npm to this folder right well if I wanted to install some something somewhere else right I would do install express and then I would pass a option for global the G hyphen G and that's going to install my package globally meaning that somewhere else in my computer somewhere in the root where npm actually resides it's gonna install there not not where it is located not where the program is exactly but it's gonna put it somewhere in my computer that's that's away from the projects from the local projects you see so far we have been learning how to install the packages locally locally project by project but now if I do this, npm install express, and let me see, let me look at my first screen here. So in my computer, in the user local lib, there is uh, no modules there, uh, folder. If I do ls, you can see that I got npm, which is the program, 
NPM, and Angular. That's okay. So if I go to the second tab here and I press, uh, I do the G, let's do that. I'm going to press enter. That go that's going to install it locally, but it's telling me something about uh, missing permission, missing right access, right? So what I'm going to do is sometimes you need to run sudo. This is for Mac operating system. Sudo, enter my password from the computer, my login password for this computer. And that was going to do something there. Obviously, it did something. Now when I go to the local package here, uh, to the no modules in the global area, if I do ls, you can see now that Express is here. Okay? So this is the like the center location, the central location where global packages are installed in my computer. For Windows users, on the other hand, um, you're going to have something like, you're going to have your user profile. I don't know where that is, your, whatever name you have in your computer. And then it's going to be on app data somewhere, roaming, and you can always Google this, guys. NPM, and then the folder is going to be somewhere here, I believe. Okay, node modules. This is um, for like Windows 7, 8, 10. Okay, I think for like Windows XP, it doesn't have the roaming. We need to take this off. All right, so that would be like the user profile, whatever, however you can find app data. Okay, in your computer, you can search for it. And then the next folder should be NPM and then no modules for Windows 7, 8, and 10. For Windows XP, you got the roaming. Okay, remember that. I mean, for Windows, this is for Windows XP. This is for Windows 7, 8, 10. Okay, something like that. Guys, you can look this up. But anyway, I'm going to uninstall that because I don't need Express globally. So I'm going to uninstall. All right. And it removed that. If I do ls, it's not there anymore. Perfect. Alrighty. So, thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture. Welcome back, my awesome students. So, there are times when you want to, when you are, you know, nowhere around your, um, you don't have an IDE or text editor, and you want to know what's installed in your, um, in your local NPM directory or no modules folder right so there is a way that you can just type in a command for example if we if we type in help right we're going to get some information it's going to tell us hey listen and, and right here here's some some commands so what can we use from here uh, from here to to kind of list our some of the stuff that are installed here let me see if we find anything here uh, Look, they have a list. So let's do that. Let's do npm install. Well, not installed. Let's just do list. And let's let's actually look to see if that list has, um, let me see something. Help list. Let me just see if we can do something else with that list. npm list. Huh. LA and that okay those are okay so I can do just LA here or L and then whatever I want let me see no that doesn't work okay okay let's just do npm list and let's see what we got There we go. So it did. It does work. It has low dash. Yep. And then npm ll. There we go. That works as well. All right. Perfect. So it is. It's giving me an error here. But Angular no modules. I was just looking for the error guy. Eh, eh, error guys. Don't worry too much about it. Let me see. That's because I am in the other folder now. You see that? So let's go to our local folder here. This is the one that we need. 
there we go and that gives me what I want alrighty perfect yeah because this folder probably needs permission in order for us to run that that command okay successfully let's just clear that out let's go to here and as you can see we have that express and course so the course has two dependencies object assign and vary this express here has a whole bunch it has this accepts and this accepts has mine types and mine db you see that the little branches here these are dependencies and at seps has a dependency of negotiator and mine types and mine type has another dependency of mine db right here you see that now accepts also has another dependency array flatten body parser look at that body parser has a whole bunch of other dependencies look at this uh, branch by its content look at that then HTTP errors errors have more this is beautiful right so that's how you can list your packages your local packages with npm list and its dependencies so let's let's take a little deeper now let's say I wanted to look at the packages without its dependencies uh, let's say course right so let's just npm list let's pass a and that's what I wanted to see before if he had any if oops if he had any other usage okay maybe we can find some more information on the website if we do the um, the search but I'm not going to do that right now you can do that on your own you know how to uh, search for that type of information right we help search but right now what I'm going to show you is we list and we want to go depth I think that's how it's spelled and if I do zero it's just going to list my packages without its dependencies okay so now I know that I have two if I wanted to go a level down with its dependencies I just put one and we go a level down okay express as those what about level two Oop, level three level two okay depending how many you how many dependencies you want in this case if I do one only okay we just seen the, the package and it's one level dependencies if we do two we see the package and these two levels and three levels you get the drill right right so if for this for this guy right here I think I'm gonna try something real quick let's try npm list and let's just pass the global I can just pass the G I believe and let's just say if it does it like this there we go okay let's pass the G sometimes I experiment with, with abbreviations and there we go all right so if we pass the G we want to see the global packages we got okay and we can do the same thing here we can just say deb to zero there we go and then we I can see that I got angular and npm okay simple that's that's useful right alrighty perfect guys thank you so much for watching remember guys to keep studying to keep getting better keep learning new things you know um, and, and, and consistency if, if you for some reason you don't understand something just keep trying it and trying it every single day and one day you're gonna wake up and you're gonna be like wow this is so easy but a couple of months ago it wasn't right it was really hard but that's what's gonna happen if you keep trying over and over again repetition so see you in the next lecture guys take care guys I think I'm just gonna I'm going to create it like a bloopers or bloop, bloopers I don't know how you call that when you make errors in your in your videos because the last one was just so funny I tried speaking and my voice just went out completely. It was like, <laughs> I was just cracking up for like 10 minutes. I wasted 10 minutes of my life cracking up there, but laughing is good. But anyway, guys, aside from that, um, what I want to show you in this lecture here is that, yeah, I want to demonstrate to you that you don't need this folder here to make things work. This no modules folder. Um, if I delete it, I can just recreate it real quick. So just in case you have some type of problem in your application one day, 
uh, when you are, let's say, using Composer in the future, maybe for PHP or something like that, you can delete this file. All we need is the package.json. And of course, you can also delete this information. And I'll show you, I can just leave this empty. And if I do npm install, okay, it's not going to do anything because it doesn't have that information. But look what happened with no modules folder. It just em er removed 53 packages because it's empty now. You see that? Now, if I delete it completely, you're going to call me crazy. Go ahead, call it to me because I won't hear you anyway. I'm going to paste that. I'm going to do command Z to undo that. And I'm going to, you see, I don't have the no modules there. I'm going to do npm install. And now if I look at my no modules, it's back again. So don't be scared to delete this, file, this folder here if, you get, if you're getting any type of error in the future. One of the best ways to avoid things is just deleting this whole thing again. And don't be afraid to delete this. Of course, I would suggest backing up this file. <laughs> okay. And, um, and that's it. And you can, of course, install whatever version you want. If you want version 1, uh, 4, let's say here. You can just go do that. Okay. And do npm install. Okay. And if you go there, you're going to find Bootstrap somewhere, 4 point something, whatever. Okay. Alrighty. Thank you. See you in the next lecture. Welcome back, my amazing students. So in this lecture, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to run scripts uh, using uh, package.json here. And if you can look at the line six right here, we have a field called strips, uh, not strips, scripts. <laughs> and uh, another field here called test. So this field here is an object or a document, if you want to call it that. And it's going to have some va uh, some keys and values there. Now, we can run the scripts by using npm and the name of that script. In this case, test. But I'm going to show you another way. Let's put the start right here. Okay, because if I run test, I'll show you, let me just put nothing here on start just to take that away let me just do npm test here if i do this you can see here that it says echo no test specify exit one same thing that is here okay so we know that here in the terminal whatever if we want to run an application we have to call it by its name right most of the time so if i wanted to run python i run python and then whatever code i need if i wanted to run php i run php and whatever code I need, because that's PHP, the language. And if I wanted to run Node, I do that. NPM is not different. NPM, and then run, and then test. Okay, well, this one is not going to do that, but we can say NPM test like this. I forgot. There we go. Test failed. Okay. NPM test. Now, if I wanted to run the, the next one, I will have to call it by its name. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run node with this one. Okay? And what I can do is I can run another file that I have on my system. Usually, when we are doing like Express servers or using Express, uh, we, we do something like this and we execute a file. Okay? I'm going to create that file right now. That file is going to be app.js. And inside here, I can just write whatever I want. Console. So you can see it. I am running solo with, actually, I'm running with Edwin Diaz. I don't know why my ID does that with my name. I'm going to... All right, whatever. I'm just going to leave him alone. All right. So, npm start. And as you can see, it's running that. And that file, it's saying, I am running with Edwin Diaz. You can see it right here in the console dialog. So, 
Node, we are running a script here that's that's using Node to run this file here. And you're going to see that a lot when you are creating applications using, of course, package.json or npm, right? So that's about it. That's how you run scripts and you can create as many as you want. Sometimes you are going to be running a command and you're going to get a update uh, warning here. So I'm going to show you how to update your npm. npm install npm at latest hyphen g. Now, if you're running in a Mac, make sure that you do sudo and then you type in your login password for your computer. And that's going to install your npm to the latest. Now, of course, you also might want to install and let me see the problem here. You might also want to install the latest of node as well. Let's do this again. Sometimes you might have to get out of the terminal if you get that type of problem like I did. This one says no matching version found for npm latest. Okay. That's weird. So let me just get out of there, get out of my project and do it in my terminal because sometimes you will get really strange errors. Okay. Really strange. And you have to try a couple different things. If if it gives, if it gives you something something like that, um, just get out of it and do it from somewhere else, or close your terminal or something, or try to figure out maybe you have. You see, it says permission there. So I forgot my permission. Sudo. And let's see if it does it. I already did it a couple minutes ago. And I figured, let, I, I said, let me show my students. Right, you see, he added three packages, whatever. And um, so it worked from outside. But for some reason, my project wasn't working. Okay. So you might want to get out of your project or close your terminal or do it from somewhere else. Because sometimes these things are not 100%. And NPM is going to have uh, its problems once in a while. Okay. So don't think it's you making the mistake. It could be them. It could be the program that has a bug. Okay. So this is how you install installed the latest version for your NPM, which is very useful to have because uh, depending on your version, it's going to install different packages, uh, the latest packages, or better dependencies or something. Okay. Maybe they gave they um, made it better. All right. Of course they make it better all the time, but. You know, it's always good to keep updated packages, updated programs. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next lecture. Welcome back, my amazing students. So, you don't need to go to mpjs or npmjs.com or that or whatever to get packages. You can actually or, or search packages. You can actually do it from here. So let me show you. You can search that registry by doing npm. Let's say, for example, you want to search for the make directory package and you search for it and it's going to tell you, hey, listen, we found it. It's called make directory. This is the description here. This is the author, the date and the version. So let's go ahead and install it. So I'm going to go and say, hey, listen, npm install and install it. And that's going to install the make the m directory package 1.30 okay super simple guys and of course you can find more information by going online and looking at what that one has done okay or you can just go and try to make it work I think that package uh, does something if it does well I know it does something it's gonna make a directory and it's gonna give us some more extra functionalities all right so but anyway that's how you do it guys that's how you can search for package Find the name and install instead of looking for it somewhere else. Let's say you want to find a package to uh, do CSS animation. Let's just do npm install or let's do animations here or something. Maybe finds a package related to that. Oh, that was installed. Look, it had an animations package there. Okay, let's just search for it. Search for something. 
Sorry about that. And it has a whole bunch of different things here that you can look for. Okay. And it has a description here. All right. This is the React component here. Look at that. All right. So I like this one. The V installed V show slide. Awesome. I'm getting my uh, my project going here, guys. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next lecture, guys. Welcome back, my dear uh, students. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to install a package and use it. All right? So for example, I'm going to be installing the, let me show you, the math random package. Okay? Let's install that. And I'm going to show you how to use it real quick, just in case you guys get curious and you want to play around a little bit. So I'm going to say math, npm, oh, npm installed. I'm just going to do i from now on. All right, guys? Math random. I think I put that backwards there. All righty. Perfect. And right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it. Well, I'm going to require, and this is in Node, remember that. I'm using Node. Let me just put this back. Edwin Diaz here. I'm just going to bring this down here. All right. So I'm going to create a constant. I'm going to name it random. I'm going to require, I'm going to use the require function from Node. And I'm going to require it there so that I can use it. So now here, I'm going to grab the console so that I can see what in the world I'm doing. And I'm just going to run that function random, just like that. OK? How do I know how to use it? Well, I went to the page and I read a little bit about it. Simple. So now, if I do npm star, remember that npm star is going to run my script that I got right here right here which my script is going to be doing node app.js I could do node app.js and run it here but I want to be using npm to show you guys now, as you can see we got a random number let's do it again random number that's awesome isn't it and I can do this too node app look at that alrighty I just wanted to show you that just in case you guys you know you feel you know, you feel like an explorer and, and you want to explore things and packages out there and you want to play around with it. Know that you can do it here. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much for everything, guys. For, you know, for some of you taking my other courses, for some of you uh, paying attention to the lecture, for some of you even liking me because I'm a very difficult person to like, right? But anyway, guys, thank you so much. And I'll see you on the next lectures. Hey guys, I wanted to personally thank you for taking my course. In my courses, some of you are fans, right? You guys take all my courses and I really appreciate that. It really means a lot because it helps me keep creating more courses for those of you that need it. And those of you that like to get some of the motivation inside the courses and all that. If you guys need extra help, you can always send me a private message or ask for me in the class and I will contact you, okay? Now I got hundreds of thousands of students and maybe millions by the time you're looking at this, but don't worry, I will get to you. If it takes me a little bit, don't worry, I will get to you, okay? Don't forget to keep learning and practicing consistently, guys. That is the only way you're going to ever achieve anything, okay? Don't forget consistently every single day. Don't miss a day. Thank you again. And I'll see you on the next courses. Take care, guys.